how to control the GEP RC Naked GoPro Hero 8 with QR codes, that coming up right after this. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Ryan. And on this channel, we do a lot of tips, tricks, and reviews, mostly drone-related stuff, but also some photography and videography-related things too. So if that's something you're interested in, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's greatly appreciated. So you may have just gotten this new GEP RC Naked GoPro Hero 8, and uh, it can kind of be uh, interesting to set it up, to say the least. Uh, since there is no back screen on this, you do have a front screen but there isn't a traditional way to go through a touch menu uh, to go ahead and configure it. Now you can get into the GoPro Quick app on your phone, connect it that way. Uh, it can sometimes be tedious connecting it to Wi-Fi, those sorts of things. So we're gonna talk about a way today that you can control the GoPro using QR codes, also using your smartphone with dynamically created QR codes. So you may see that we do have a mount for the GEP RC Naked GoPro Hero 8. Uh, it is available on our website. We'll leave a link down in the description below for that. So a couple things that we need to do, we need to go ahead and install the GoPro Labs firmware on this uh, Naked GoPro. And the way we do that, we go to the, uh, the GoPro Labs website. I'll have a link down in the description below. Uh, scroll down to the Getting Started section, click on that. And then we'll go ahead and scroll down to where it says GoPro Hero 8, and you will download that file. So what you need to do is copy the contents of that zip file you just downloaded. It should be called update.zip. Uh, open that zip file. Inside there is a folder called update. We need to copy the contents of that zip file to the root of your SD card that's in your camera. So once you do that, the easiest way to do it is to use a memory card reader. Uh, if you don't have one, we'll have a link down below where you can pick one up on Amazon. Uh, some of those are affiliate links, by the way. We greatly appreciate you using them, and it helps, a, by, it helps us by giving us a small kickback. Uh, for each sale that's made, it doesn't cost you anything else. So once that update folder is on the root of your uh, SD card, Go ahead and reinsert that into the naked camera and power it on. I found the easiest way to power it on when you are uh, when you don't have it hooked up to your drone is to go ahead and just make a lead like this that just connects to the uh, the balance lead on your lipo and then goes into your camera. I will also leave a link down in the description below where you can purchase one of those if that's something that you need to do if you can't make one of these yourself. So once that is in your camera, the SD card's in your camera, go ahead and power it on, and you'll see that on the front screen, it's going to do a uh, updating icon. Uh, it takes just a couple of minutes to update. Uh, it'll restart, and once it's finally done, you're good to go. So what this does is it creates a, a kind of a separate firmware, if you will. Uh, it's not going to change any of the previous firmware updates that you've done, you still will be able to, um, you know, have all the similar updates and those sorts of things. But what this does is it adds the uh, ability to look for these QR codes and to be able to modify, um, to modify your settings using those QR codes. So now that we got the camera configured, let's talk about the easiest way to make these QR codes uh, so it's easy for you to use. There's two different methods I'm going to show you, both using the same app on your phone. Uh, this app is available for both Android and iOS operating systems. It's called QR Control. I'll put a link down in the description where you can download that in your Play Store uh, or your App Store, depending on which operating system you're using. All right, so we'll go ahead and launch that, the app, and you'll, you'll see right away that you start with just one uh, setup, if you will. You can add multiple setups. I typically run two setups, uh, one if I want to run real steady after the fact, or another one if I just want to have hyper smooth on. Normally, I run real steady when I'm wanting to do more cinematic, uh, you know, perfect motion, uh, and I'll run just with hyper smooth on if I'm just doing typical freestyle type stuff with the cameras on. 
Now, um, one thing I want to mention before we go any further, this also will work on your other GoPros as well. If you have a um, Naked Hero 7 uh, or 8, obviously this is an 8, um, it'll work on those. It'll also work on a not decased GoPro 7, 8, and 9. It'll also work on the uh, Hero Session 5. Uh, so keep that in mind. This is a good way to make sure that all your cameras across the board that you're using are using the exact same setting when you go out to film during the day. So now we got the app up and running, and uh, I'm gonna go through my typical settings for both real steady and my hyper smooth setups. Um, so on, it, it's, this app is divided into several different tabs. Across the top, you have a mode tab, a pro tune, prefs, which is preferences, start capture, motion trigger, speed trigger, sound trigger, and metadata features. Um, most of what we are going to be using is just in the first couple of tabs. Uh, so starting off, this will be my real steady setup. You can, if you need to pause the video, you can go ahead and do that and see exactly what my settings are. Obviously want the camera in video mode. I set my camera to 4K 4x3 when I'm shooting for real steady. Uh, I shoot at 60 frames per second with the lens set to wide. Um, electronic image stabilization needs to be turned off. And then uh, as far as the hindsight, we don't use anything with hindsight. That's only for the Hero 9 anyway. As well as the limit, we do not set. Um, audio, we have to not set. Now you'll see that this code is dynamically updating. With that dynamic update, we are getting a uh, accurate date and time. You'll see I have a slider right next to the QR code turned on. That is setting the current date and time as of this second. Um, one thing with this, since it doesn't have an internal battery of any sort, uh, you have to, um, it, it, when, you'll notice when you record on here, it won't have a current date and time set on there. So what we can do is have the app go ahead and set that for us. And then we no longer have to worry about that. It'll go ahead and set it precisely when we're ready to go. Um, so that's everything on the first tab. And then we'll jump over to the ProTune tab. I typically have my white balance set around between 5,000 and 5,500 Kelvin. Um, sharpness set either to medium or low. I can always add, add sharpening in post if I need to. Um, raw audio, we don't have anything set with raw audio. I always film in a flat color profile. That way, I, after the fact, I can do some color grading on it. Um, EV compensation is set to zero. ISO minimum is set to 100. ISO maximum is set at 800. And um, you can set the lock shutter if you want to the 180 degree rule. Um, you will need to use most likely ND filters, uh, usually around ND8 to ND16, if you do set up with the 180 degree shutter rule. If you do not do that, um, I would set that to 360 degrees. Basically, that is a, um, it doesn't do any um, modifications to the, uh, the shutter speed to try to make it half your frame rate. All right, um, moving on to preferences. Um, preferences, I, you really don't need to set anything in here, but go ahead and, and you can see th all the things that you can set in here if you need to. Um, lastly, I have start capture turned on uh, on the next tab uh, for one second after it reads the QR code. That way I don't even need to hit the record button. It's just gonna automatically start recording for me. Um, and then last three tabs, or I'm sorry, last four tabs, we really don't need to do anything with. We're not doing anything with motion triggers, speed triggers, sound uh, triggers, um, and we don't need to add any additional metadata features. So that is it for the real steady setup. All right, so if you want to create another uh, setup, just hit the plus mark and it's gonna go ahead and add another one to, uh, to this, a whole nother setup. And you can see that when I swipe over, here's my hyper smooth settings. The hyper smooth settings uh, are very similar to what I had set up before. It is set to video, it's set to 4K. I don't use four by three when I use hyper smooth, I just use regular 4K, 60 frames per second, lens set to wide. Electronic image stabilization, I do have set at high. Um, you can set it at, at um, hyper smooth boost if you want to have the uh, essentially the, the most smoothed picture. It does crop in a little bit more, so just remember that. And then uh, uh, the last three bottom settings with hindsight, uh, limit, uh, and audio are all set to not set because we don't use any of those. And then lastly, the slider for time and date, I do have turned on so you can see that that is a dynamic QR code that's constantly changing, giving us the current up-to-date time.
You'll also see in the app that there is a place where you can save those QR codes. Uh, so you can go ahead and if you want to print them out, you can do that. So you can just always have them in your flight bag uh, and then just to hold the piece of paper in front of it. If, and that's a good backup if you don't have your phone with you or if for some reason your phone goes dead and you can't set that. Um, so always a good backup to have. So now that we got everything set up, all we need to do is simply power on the camera, hold our phone in front of the camera's lens. It will read that QR code. You'll see a double flash of the light. And then you should see here in a second that it's now recording because I had it auto start recording after one second. Likewise, if you're using a printed version of the QR codes, all you need to do is hold that QR code up in front of the lens and it will go ahead and read it and go from there. So um, if you have them printed, excuse me, wow, a bug tried to fly in my hair. Um, so if you do have two of them printed on a sheet similar to this, these are my two settings. I usually just cover one up with my hand, uh, that way it doesn't confuse it at all, and then just hold it in front of the lens, and you should see that it'll do the same thing and start recording here. So that's going to wrap up this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section down below. I will be glad to answer them there. If you found this video helpful, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. It's greatly appreciated. So that's it. Fly safe, and bye for now.